morning. Please stand for the reading of God's word. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who appointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. You all may be seated. Try to get the technical glitch worked out here so we can have the full screen. So... There we go. Hey, we got it worked out. Wonderful. So as we continue on, we're going to be continuing our study called Road to the Cross. And we're going to be reflecting on Christ's journey. And, uh, you know, as we've been looking, we've, we've seen some pretty amazing stops so far, haven't we? We saw, you know, the Mount of Transfiguration. We saw Jesus teaching about the mission that he came on and that he was coming to. And he was coming to to share the good news of who he is and, and what he came to do. And uh, that he was, he was coming to seek the lost. Well, today we're going to see him in a different light. We're going to see him as conqueror of death. And, and you know, as we take a look at this, I hope that this is going to be a blessing to you today as we take a look at, at what is a very familiar story to many of us. Uh, but I want us to understand the connotations of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead and why this is so important and, and what it says about Jesus. And so as we take a look at this, I, I, want, I want us to, to think about the, uh, this quote here. It says, the greatest lessons in life are often learned through hard times and difficult situations. You know, th that, that's the truth, isn't it? You know, when we think about all the things that we've learned in life, you know, it's, it's hard to think. We, we like the nice and easy times. We like the times that that everything makes sense and everything is, is sweet and innocent and easy. But when we really think about the things that have really shaped us, usually it's through adversity. And, and we think about what, what Jesus is going to be doing. He is going to be showing his disciples one of the, 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 the ultimate proof of who he is. And, and the fact of the matter is that, that it is something that, that was difficult. He had to have... People he loved go through a very difficult time for him to, to teach this lesson. And so, you know, I want us to think about that sometimes we go through difficult times in our life. That sometimes the, the harsh realities, the difficulties that we go through is not because the Lord is angry with us, but he's wanting to teach us something. He's wanting to show us to make us grow. And so we, we need to think about that as we look at, at uh, God's word today. So turn with me if you would, and we're going to be in the Gospel of John, and we're going to be in chapter 11. And, and I know that uh, we, last year we were in the Gospel of John, and, and we went through John exclusively as we were preparing for Resurrection Day last year. And so we're, we're going to be, this is going to sound very familiar, but I want us to take a look at in, in maybe just a slightly different light than we did last year, because this is so important as we, we prepare ourselves for the next couple of weeks. We have Palm Sunday next week as, as we, we're going to be looking at the triumphant entry of Jesus and also some of the, the things that happened during uh, Passion Week. Um, and then we also have Resurrection Day itself as we celebrate Jesus conquering death, hell, and the grave. And so as we look at this, uh, uh, we're going to start here in chapter 11 starting in verse 1 through 4. And Jonathan was reading that to us this morning. It says... Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town, uh, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, him whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard, it, heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. And so we, we see the, this situation now. Now, you know, I, I've been fighting off a cold and, and uh, I'm sure that many others have, have dealt with, you know, little minor illnesses and stuff. But, 
you know, we think, you know, sick, getting, getting sick is part of life, right? It's, it's part of it. You know, we, we, we'll try to get through it and that sort of thing. But, but Lazarus was, was sick, what we would think was, was very critically sick. And, uh, you know, when, when Jesus states, he, he hears about this, you know, Mary and Martha send to Jesus and say, hey, Lazarus, the one whom you love, is, is sick. You know, Jesus is, is he's not, he, he doesn't seem so concerned about it. He says, you know, sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, when we think about what's, what's happening here, you know, we, we, we know and, and you know, I, I, we get to think about the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. He is the, the physical embodiment of God here on earth with us. And he, he cannot lie. He, he's under the same rules that God the Father is, that, that God cannot lie. And so yet, as he's saying this, you know, we, we sort of miss this part that he says the sickness is not unto death. You know, we also were going to see that, that Lazarus is going to die. So how do we... Jesus is already saying what he's going to do, that, that this is not going to be the end of Lazarus. He's already basically putting out there that, that there is going to be something miraculous happen. But we sort of miss it. And I'm sure his, his disciples, they heard, oh, well, he's, you know, Jesus knows these things. You know, he says he's not sick unto death. He's fine. We'll, we'll just let it be. Because think about this. That Mary and, and, and Martha and, and Lazarus, they were very, very close friends to Jesus and the, the disciples. Whenever they would go in the, the general area of Jerusalem and stuff, they, they probably stayed with Mary and Martha and Lazarus. We see several times that, that the interaction of the, this family with Jesus and, and how they, they just loved him and they were there for him. And so these people were very close, and, and you can see that concern and that, that understanding when Mary Martha says, the one whom you love is sick. You know, I, I know I got some news a few weeks ago that my dad was sick, and he was, had to go to the hospital and had some, some stuff going on with him. And, and it, was, it was hard for me to hear that and not rush to his side because I love my dad. But, but, you know, I, I knew that he was, he was being taken care of. I knew I, I needed to be here to be with you all. And so I had to, I had to wait. But, but I understand with that, that desire, that pull in us to want to go to those who we love who are sick and who are not able to take care of themselves. And so when we think about what Jesus was going through, it had to tear at him because he knew what was going to happen. He knew the difficulty that Mary and Martha was going to go through, even his own disciples were going to go through with, with this, this event that was going to happen because this was, this was literally triggering the event that was going to, to sentence Jesus to death. Because this is the event, this is the final straw that breaks the camel's back that, that the Pharisees who had already had enough of him say, we can't tolerate him anymore, we've got to get rid of him. And so let's, let's continue on as we, we see what happens with Lazarus. Starting in verse 5, it says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so that when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let's go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and you were going there again. And so is, is he, he waits two days. He waits for, for all this to happen. He knows the heartache that's going on, and yet he, he stayed because he wants to show those that are trusting in him. He wants to show them the ultimate proof of who he is. Because as we're going to learn, there is, there is some cultural beliefs in, 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 in Israel, in, for the is Israelite people. And one of those beliefs is about death. And we're going to take a look at how Jesus is going to prove that he is the Son of God and no one else can do what he's going to do because even the people have this, this thought of how long somebody is di has died and, and whether they can come back or not to life and, and all this. And so he is going to show that he is literal, literally the conqueror of death. And so as Jesus gets ready and he says, hey, let's go back to Judea again. Now, we haven't been reading straight through John, but, but to bring this back to chapter 10, this is, you know, John chapter 10, I've, I've shared with you, is my favorite chapter in the Bible. And John chapter 10 is where Jesus is in 
Jerusalem and he is there during uh, the, the festival of dedication, which would have been, uh, would have been Hanukkah. Okay, that was the other name for Hanukkah at the time. It was a festival of dedication. And, and Jesus was teaching the people in the, the porch of Solomon. And he was at telling them some of the I am statements. And he was basically claiming to be equal with God. And, and so people have asked, you know, Jesus never really said that, that he was God. Yes, he did. The problem is, is he didn't say it how we would recognize it. He said the I am statements. You know, before, before Abraham was, I am. You know, I and my father are one. He says, you know, I am the bread of life. I am the living water. You know, he made these statements. And, and the fact that he's using I am is, is such a, a thing that is so unique because it was what, who God claimed himself to be. When you look back in the book of Exodus, when you look at, at uh, you know, Moses out there in the wilderness... And he had the burning bush, and, and Moses is asking him, you know, who will I say has sent me? And he says, I am that I am. Tell him that I am that I am has sent you. That God has always existed. It, it, it tells of who he is. He has always been and always will be. He is the only one that is eternal, that, that has always existed, has always been, has no beginning and no end. And so they, they were cr- trying to stone Jesus and so they, they, he was asking, are, are you sure you want to go back there so soon? Are you sure? Because remember, he just told the disciples that this sickness wasn't unto death. So they, they, they just put it out of their mind. They, they weren't even thinking about Lazarus at the time. They were just thinking about, Jesus, we had a really difficult time the last time you were there in Judea. Are you sure you want to go back? So let's continue. Verse 9. Jesus answered and said, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said after that, he he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then the disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death when he thought that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us go that we may die with him. I want want to set this up for you a little bit is what Jesus is saying. You know, Jesus has been talking about that he is the light of the world, right? That, that he was the light of the world. And he's saying, you know, are there not 12 hours in the day? Don't we have day and night? And he's saying the time is, the, the evening is coming. The time is growing short. And I've got to fulfill the tasks that the Father has said for me. And so he's, he's saying that, you know, those that walk in the day, they don't stumble because they have the light. Those that walk in the night stumble because the light's not in him. And he says that Lazarus sleeps and he goes there to wake him up. And, and, and his disciples are like, oh yeah, you told us he's not sick unto death. You know, if he's sleeping, that's a great thing. He'll, he'll get better. He's resting. Can you imagine? Here's the disciples. They think they, they thought nothing of this with Lazarus. They even put it out of their mind. You know, here, here he's bringing Lazarus up again. They, they probably hadn't even thought about it. And, he, and Jesus says, Lazarus is dead. This had to hit them like, like a, a fist in the gut. Because they cared about Lazarus too. This, this was one of their friends as well. And Jesus says this, and, and, and I, wonder, I wonder what they were thinking. I wonder what was going through their head. I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Jesus is going to do one of his greatest miracles. And he's saying, I'm glad I wasn't there because, you know, if, if I'd been there, we would, have, we would have healed him or we would have, if he died, we would have raised him right then and there. Because Jesus had, has done this before. He has raised people from the dead. But we'll get there in a second. But this was going to be different. But I want you to see something. You know, we think of Thomas, when we think of Thomas, we think of doubting Thomas. But I want you to see, I want you to see about Thomas. Thomas is courageous because as he hears that Lazarus has died and Jesus wants to go see him, 
This is what he says. It says, Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. I love him so much that if, if we go and they decide to, to kill us, so be it. Let's go. Can you imagine that? Are, are, you, are you that courageous that, you know, I, I don't care if people know that I'm a Christian. If, 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 they, if they decide to take my life, so be it. Let's go. This is, this is who Thomas is. This is, this is what he, and so he is, he is ready to lay his life on the line with Jesus to go and pay his respects. Because they thought, oh man, we're, we're going. But I wonder, I wonder what, if, if that little thing that he said before, I wonder if they go, man, Jesus has never told us anything untrue. And he said that this is not unto death. He's not sick unto death. What, did Jesus make a mistake? Did he tell us something that wasn't right? I wonder if they had this going through their head, or, or I wonder if they're going, what's he going to do? Let's go on, verse 17. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now I want you to think about this. Is we're not exactly sure where they were, but as a messenger came to them and told them that Lazarus had, was sick, he probably had already died, or, or shortly thereafter. And so Jesus had, had known this, and he had waited two extra days. So when they got there, he'd been in the tomb four days. Now that four days is very important, and I want you to hold on to that. So remember that he's been in the tomb four days. Let's continue on. It says, Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many Jews had joined the women in Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went out and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give, to you, give you. You know, we, we see this. This is a role reversal, isn't it, for Mary and Martha? Remember, Martha was the one when... When we have the story of uh, Mary and Martha before, that Martha was the one that was good cooking and preparing and all this sort of stuff, and, and Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus listening to him. And now as they, they have this time of, of mourning, Martha is the one that hears that Jesus is there and she rushes out to meet him. Now, we see a couple of different things. Is one is, is when we see Martha's reply, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. You know, in some respects, she's, she's acknowledging the fact that she knew that, that her brother meant a lot to Jesus. But in some respects, it might have been a little accusatory in some respects. Is, you know, we sent word to you that you're sick. Why didn't you come sooner? Why didn't you get here quicker? But I, I love this. It is, is she's not so broken as to, to, to forget who Jesus is and what he can do. Because as we see in verse 22, but even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. You know, there's, there's, it, is, it is hard when you have a loved one that passes away. That is a hurt that is really hard to describe to somebody unless you've experienced it. And it can be easy to get mad at God when we, when we lose someone we love. It can be easy to, to go, why, why did this have to happen, Lord, and, and, and that sort of thing. But, but I love the fact that here's Martha. You know, she was the one that had to have some teaching moments before. And yet, even in her grief, she recognizes who Jesus is and the fact that he, whatever he asks, the Lord will give. And so let's see what, what Jesus' response is to her. Verse 23. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. 
You know, it's one of those times that, that Jesus is being really honest and open with her. But she's not quite getting it. And you know, I, I love these places in Scripture. And, you, and, and the reason why is, is the fact that when we, we hear Jesus, we read about what he says and we don't quite get it. We're in good company. Even the people that were right there didn't always get it. You know, Jesus said, your brother will rise again. And she's thinking he's talking about the last day, the day of the Lord, when the, the, the Lord comes to set things right. And he says, I, I know that he'll rise again, the resur resurrection at the last day. But Jesus is trying to tell, I, I want you to understand this. And, it, and this is so important. This is, this is the, 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 the putting together of his entire ministry. This is putting all the loose ends together. He, you know, this is why Jesus says, I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there that you may believe. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And here is one of those few people that, that, that maybe they don't get exactly what Jesus is saying in the moment, but they get the core message. They get the big point. She says, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. What a wonderful declaration of faith, even in her grief. Well, let's see what happens, because we still have Mary to come. And Mary is, is the tender-hearted one. Remember, Mary is the one that she, she wiped, wiped Jesus' feet with her hair and the perfume. She's the one that sat at the feet of Jesus when he was teaching Mary is very, very special to Jesus. And she is going to come and, and grieve and be there with Jesus. And so let's see what happens. Verse 28. And when she had said these things, she went away and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. And as soon as she heard that, she arose and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into town, but was in the place where Martha met him. And the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose quickly and went out following her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary had come to Jesus and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came after her weeping, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see. You know, when we think about this, we, we see that Jesus has empathy for us, not sympathy. You know, uh, this is one of the things that, that really means a lot to me is when I, when I think about Jesus. When we, we've been reading in Hebrews and or for Sunday school that we have a, a great high priest that doesn't just sympathize, but empathizes with us because he's experienced it. Have you ever seen somebody who's grieving? Somebody that you care about that is grieving. It tears at you. It will break you. And we see Mary that she comes before Jesus. And, and the people think she's, she's going to weep at the tomb. You know, a, a time of mourning was so sacred for, for the Jewish people. And how they did it and, and all this sort of thing. And so the, the, her friends and, and all the people from, from Jerusalem who had come to, to support her and weep with her, they, they were going to go with her. And she throws herself down to feed Jesus. She says, if you'd been here, my, my brother would have lived. And so when he saw her crying and he saw the Jews who were weeping, and, and it says it groaned in his spirit and was troubled. And he asked, where have you laid him? They said, come and see. We see that Jesus is, is moved. He, he ha, he's, not this, he's not this emotionless person that goes around in a robe and, and just sort of floats off the ground. As he, he, he was fully God and fully man. And so seeing somebody you love so much who is grieving is, is, is just struggling. It broke him as well. And that's, that's something that, that I treasure because when we think about Jesus... When we, when we are struggling, when we are having difficult times, He cares for us. He's there for us when we, when, we, when we are 
distressed and we're grieving and we're having difficulty. He knows what that's like. He doesn't just sympathize and, well, you know, that's, that's too bad. I'm sorry for you. He empathizes. He's there with us. He knows what that's like. And so he, he empathizes and, he, and he's, where, where have you laid him? And then we see the shortest verse in the Bible and one of the most powerful. Verse 35. Jesus wept. Now this isn't just a, you know, he had a tear that came. He, he grieved. He cried. It is hard when you have somebody passes that you love. You know, I'm, I count myself so, so very blessed. I've only had two of my grandparents who have, who have passed away. I still have my grandparents, many of them. And, you know, I think back to my, my grandfather. He passed away right before Veronica and I were able to get married. That broke my heart. You know, he never got to see his, his great-grandkids my grandmother who's passed away, that, 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 man, that hurt. But you know, the thing that, that is such a comfort is the fact that, that when, we're, when we're having such a horrible time, when, when, we're, when we're hurting, the Lord is there with us. And that is a hope that Christians have that no one else in this world has. When we think about it, because we serve a living and risen Savior. Do you realize how, what a wonderful gift that we're going to be celebrating here in a couple of weeks? That Jesus is alive. He is there with us. And so Jesus weeps, verse 35, verse 36, And the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? You know, they recognized, they seen, they understood Jesus had the power to have healed Lazarus. And this is important because they need to understand Jesus isn't just a miracle man. He is conqueror of death. Verse 38. Then Jesus again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb and it was a cave and a stone laid against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he's been dead four days. This is, this is Israel. What's, what's, the, what's the temperature of Israel? It's pretty hot most of the time. They didn't embalm like they do today. I worked in a funeral home. I had the opportunity, and I... I Praise the Lord, I only had to ha- experience one dead person that they had for a couple of days that they never embalmed. It was a very sad story. The, the guy passed away on his front lawn and they found him late, hours later and they had to have the family come and identify the body. That is a smell that I will never forget. And so I can understand Martha is there and she is concerned. Lord, he, he, it's, this is going to be, have we not suffered enough? And Jesus tells them to roll the stone, take the stone away. Now, I told you that, that, that him being gone for four days was a big thing. You know, Jesus is healed and, and risen from the dead two other times. The first time was, was the little girl. You know, they, they were coming and, and, and try, going to, you know, she was sick, and they said, you know, she, she's passed, don't bother the master anymore. And he says, come and see. And so this was just hours after she passed. And he reached, you know, little, little girl, and, and, and she comes back to life. And what a wonderful miracle that was. And then we see it a second time as, as we see Jesus who is, who is in Galilee and he meets the funeral procession in there. This widow whose only son, you know, she was going to be destitute. She had no one to take care of her. Her husband had already passed. Her son had passed and they were, they were doing the funeral ceremony to take him out because when somebody died, they, they, they tried to bury them before the end of the day. And so he's being carried out. So this might have happened hours and hours early, but it was within the day. And Jesus comes up to the, the young man who is in his coffin and raises him from the dead. 
But why is four days such a big deal? The, the belief in, in Israel at the time was that the spirit of a recently departed person would hover by the body for three days and would wait just in case that, that God did something and send them and, and bring them back to life. After four days, the, the spirit was thought to have departed and there was no way, there was no possible way for someone to be brought back. That they were truly and totally and utterly dead. That there was no hope. Hope was abandoned, hope was lost. And yet after four days, Jesus says, roll the stone away. Let's go on. Verse 40. <clears throat> Jesus said to her, did I not say that, you would be, that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I say this, that, you may, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. What an amazing miracle. Do you realize there was multiple miracles that happened? It wasn't just that Lazarus came back from the dead. We've all seen the monster movies, right? Okay, Lazarus from four days, he was rotting, okay? If he just came back to life, he just started, you know, he would probably look like a zombie, okay? Probably had stuff hanging off of him, looked kind of gross and that sort of thing. Not only did Jesus raise him from the dead, he was restored. And when they rolled that stone away, the stink went whew, gone. Can you imagine? All this stuff, I mean, sometimes we forget about the other little miracles that happen when the big miracles happen. Jesus was, he is the conqueror of death. Nobody but God himself could have raised Lazarus from the dead. And everyone there knew it. This was the ultimate declaration of, I am God. Because even death obeys me. But there is a problem. Because not everybody who was there loved Jesus in the same way. And so some of these people went back and gave a report of what happened. Because this was big. There would be nobody who was truly a Jew that, that believed in, in resurrection who could deny Jesus is who he says he is. This was going to cause a stir. And so let's see what happens as we finish this up. Verse 45. Then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen the things that Jesus did believed in him. But some went away to the Pharisees and told them the things that Jesus did. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered in council and said, What shall we do for this man works many signs? If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away our place and our nation. And one of them, Caiaphas, being high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and not that the whole nation should perish." Now he did, this, did not say on his own authority, but being high priest this year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation. And not for the nation only, but, all, but also that he would gather together in one the children of God who were scattered abroad. Then from that day on they plotted to put him to death. Therefore Jesus no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went, went from there into the country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim, and there remained with his disciples." And the Passover of the Jews was near, and many went from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then they sought Jesus and spoke to themselves and said, to, said uh, stood in the temple, What do you think, that he will, he will not come to the feast? Now both the, the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a command that any knew where he was, that he should report it, that they might seize him. So this is it. This is the straw that breaks the camel's back. Do you see what they said? They said, if we, if we do nothing, everybody is going to believe him. Everybody is going to chase after him. And then the Romans are going to take away our authority and our place. They didn't care about the fact that they were literally 
in the presence of the Messiah that had been promised so long ago that they, they were supposed to be watching and waiting to guide the people and to encourage them. All they cared about was this guy's taking out the shine off our nose. This guy's going to cause the Romans to be mad at us and take away our position. And so here's Caiaphas and he, he says, it's better that one man die for the nation than the whole nation die. And that's exactly what Jesus came to do. He, he, the, the, the plan is the, in motion. The, the, last, the last little bit of, of Jesus' life is, is on display. So the question for us is going to be, what are we going to do with him? What are we going to do with Jesus? The road of the cross before he went to Jerusalem led to here, to Bethany. Where Jesus showed without a shadow of a doubt that he is the son of God. He is in charge of death itself. Jewish custom and tradition said nobody but God himself could have raised Lazarus from the dead. And just like the the disciples had already seen, even nature obeyed him. When when he told the, the storm, peace be still, and immediately it was stilled. They had seen time and time again that as he as he had the fed the five thousand, the four thousand. That he'd raised others from the dead. That he'd, he'd done miracle after miracle. He had fulfilled every prophecy of the Old Testament up to that point. And yet, they didn't understand that he had to go to the cross. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you. And Lord, as we... We thank you for the blessing and the ministry that you performed for us and you gave to us. Lord, we think about what it says because, Lord, you showed without a shadow of a doubt that you are, you are the conqueror of death, that death has to listen to you. And, Lord, you were going to do and you're getting ready to do just what you said in chapter 10, that no one would take your life from you, but you would lay it down and pick it back up again. Lord, you, you, you shared all this with the, the disciples. You shared this with your followers. They shouldn't have been surprised, but we're going to see how shocked they truly were to see you complete what you'd said you were going to do. But Lord, we thank you for it. Because it is because of that wonderful gift that you gave. It's because that you said that you would, you would die and rise again, and you did exactly what you said. Lord, that we have hope. Lord, as we come to a time of invitation, Lord, I pray that there's there's anyone here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, Lord, that they would settle that today, Lord, that they would not wait any longer, that they would come and, and ask you to be their Lord and Savior, that they would ask you to forgive them of their sins. Lord, if there's someone here who knows that this is the church that you would have them to be at, that you want them to serve in, that, that you want them to be a part of, and they, they, they know that, Lord, I pray that they would come forward and, and seek that for membership. Lord, if, if maybe you have something else on their heart and mind. Lord, maybe there's, there's a struggle that they've been dealing with. Maybe, maybe Lord, that they're just, maybe they're just dealing with the hurt of loss of a loved one. Lord, if there's any that just needs to come and pray, Lord, I pray that they would do that. Lord, just be with us in this time of invitation. We thank you and praise you for it. In your holy name, Lord Jesus. Amen. As we have this time of invitation. <laughs> We would love to have you come and visit us at Calvary Baptist Church. We're located at 1808 I Street, LaPorte, Indiana. Service times are 9.30 a.m. for Sunday school, 10.30 a.m. for the main service. Or check us out on Facebook at CBC LaPorte.